The NBA has a lengthy list of players whose primes were tragically taken by a number of injuries. Whenever we think about that list, names like Tracy McGrady, Grant Hill, and Brandon Roy immediately come to mind. And unfortunately, as much as it pains me to say it, after Sunday's news, it looks like we can officially add Derrick Rose to that list. What's up NBA fans, Dom2K on the mic, and you may be asking yourself what I'm talking about because, to many, Derrick Rose has been on that list ever since his second injury back in 2013. That's probably the moment where most people figured his rise to stardom was officially over. Well, I agree with that, and if you watched D. Rose in 2011, the type of explosion he played with, the extreme drives to the rim, yeah, I pretty much knew a torn ACL and a torn meniscus was enough to take that away. However, as recently as last month, Rose was showing signs that he could still be a very good starting point guard on the contending team, and he was even making the type of progress that made me think he could at least be an all-star one day again. Now, if you weren't paying attention because you were too busy keeping up with the Warriors and Cavs all season, don't worry, I got you covered. Derrick Rose played 64 games this season, averaging 18 points a game on 47% field goal shooting, and he was generally looking pretty healthy. In the month of March, Rose scored close to the mid or high 20s on six different occasions, but if you were actually watching these games, you saw a lot of flashes of the old Rose. He was very efficient, and his explosions to the basket were pretty reminiscent of some of the things he did back in 2011. Overall, you could just see that for the first time in a while, he was gaining steam as far as having the confidence to do those type of things again. What was even more encouraging was the fact that he's a free agent at season's end, and with the body of work he was putting together, I was thinking he'd be very attractive to all contending teams. As a fan of Rose, nothing would have been more vindicating than to see him contend for a title after all he's been through. Even if he wasn't going to be exactly like he was in 2011, that still would have been good enough. But as Sunday's news reports it, Rose has a torn meniscus for the third time in just four seasons, and now I'm honestly starting to question whether his career is coming to an end in the NBA. So my specific hope is that Rose would go to the San Antonio Spurs because I thought they both really needed each other at this point. Pretty soon, the Spurs are going to need a permanent replacement for Tony Parker because he won't be around that much longer, and with Rose only being 28 years old, I thought the Spurs could have worked him in perfectly for what they needed. First off, the Spurs system isn't overwhelmingly demanding of any one player. They move the ball around, cut and set screens, and that's the main reason they can use players you've never heard of before and still be effective. And on top of that, they also have an amazing management system, so Popovich isn't going to grind the wheels off any of his players. They get the right amount of rest needed for the playoffs, and just in general, their management system keeps players fresh far past their expiration date. Take a look at how long Tim Duncan played at a high level, and how Manu Ginobili is still contributing to them right now. These two factors made me extremely hopeful that this summer, Rose would go to the Spurs and hopefully salvage the rest of his career by taking over the team's point guard position. Not only would he have had a chance to contend for the rest of his career, but his career might have also been longer because of that rest system. And this is pretty much what I was hoping for him before his latest knee injury that pretty much appeared out of the blue. With yet another knee injury, I'm beginning to think we might not see much more of Rose in the NBA sadly. It's not what I hope, but what I see now is that Rose's body seems to just be saying it can't withstand the rigors of an NBA season. Since the day Rose tore his ACL, he's only played in 191 out of 410 possible regular season games. That's not even half of them. Want to make it even worse? Rose was missing games long before that. When we were in the lockout short in the season, he only played 39 and 66 possible games. Throughout this time, he's had a torn ACL, three torn meniscuses, injured his toes, his lower back, his groin, his ankle, his foot, his hamstring. That's not even all of them, but it about covers what we need to know. So what I'm getting at here is the best ability is availability, and if there's one thing Rose has proved, it's that he simply can't be available when you need him. So at this point, a team considering paying this guy millions of dollars has to ask themselves, what's the risk reward aspect here? When they do that analysis, it should be almost impossible for any contender team to rationalize signing him for any large amount of money or, you know, really kind of any amount of money because if you pick him up to play a crucial role come playoff time, what are the chances he's actually going to be there? What are the chances he's going to be around long enough to help you throughout the season even? They're pretty astronomically low at this point, specifically that number is about 46% based on his season since the ACL injury, so you're going to pay him as a contender for barely a 50-50 chance that he'll last long enough? And for a team that's not contending, Rose's name really won't even sell tickets anymore. He was just getting back to the point where he'd be a name people will flock to see play, but with this incident, I'd have to say that's probably gone for good as well. And finally, I'm not a doctor, so I seriously ask the question, how many times can you tear something in your knee before walking starts to become an issue? 
Typically, meniscus tears seem kind of minor, so I'm not seriously worried about him walking again. And with his determination, I'm sure he'll be playing basketball again, but four knee surgeries does seem like quite a bit. So you might not know it, but I became a huge D Rose fan shortly after he tore his ACL, and watching his The Return series, I started rooting for him to succeed just because of how driven he seemed. But even earlier than that, I remember when I first got the news of his torn ACL, and I immediately felt terrible for him because I just couldn't imagine a player with his talent one day coming off the bench and switching from team to team, and if you watched the 2011 Rose, you know exactly why that was so unthinkable at the time. Yet somehow here we are, Rose's career is looking as bleak as ever, and unless New York wants to resign him, I can pretty confidently say that his days as a starting point guard in this league are probably over. They just can't be a team willing to hand him the keys to their offense after all of this. But I have seen crazier things happen as far as signing, so I wouldn't doubt that he'll get a shot somewhere, but in the worst case scenario, I can really see Rose's career coming to an end, and sadly, we officially have another one of the NBA's biggest what if stories ever. So to wrap this video up, I wanted to point to the interview that Derrick Rose did the first time he tore his meniscus and this came right after the ACL tear. And it's pretty unfortunate because I'm pretty sure if I'm talking about the right interview, this is where he came and said, I could get hurt 10 more times and I'm, I'm going to come back each and every time. And it's pretty cruel when you think about it because it seems like somebody's really testing him. He's been injured a good uh, two or three more times since then. And even with that, I want to be clear that I'm not throwing the towel in officially on his career yet, so I'm not saying we're never going to see him in the NBA again. As a matter of fact, if you go watch one of my older videos, I'll talk about how the Orlando Magic, they make a habit out of signing players that used to be really, really good, but they catch them at the end of their careers like Patrick Ewing, Sean Kemp. Of course, Derrick Rose isn't that old yet, but, you know, with these injuries, I would say he's getting closer to the inside of his career. As far as what team is going to end up signing him, I really have no clue. I had very, very high hopes for the San Antonio Spurs, but if they're going to sign him, he's going to have to play a role, and I would have loved to see him be their starting point guard, but I, as I said in the video, I can't rationalize him starting for a contending team when you don't know if he's going to be there. And at this point, I don't know what team signs him for a serious role when he keeps getting hurt, like backup point guard, what, what does he play? I, I have no clue. So I would love to hear what you guys think. Do you think this is the last we've seen in D. Rose? Where do you think he'll go if he does keep playing? And if you're a fan of a contending team that could have used Derrick Rose, do you still want to take a chance on him after all these injuries? Leave whatever thoughts you have in the comment section about Derrick Rose. I'd love to read them. Hit the like button, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell next to my name if you want to get notifications on my videos. I'm Dom2K. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.